Senge has spoken about uh, dividing an elephant in half does not produce two small elephants. Uh, this struck a chord. And somewhere I've also been feeling that living, learning, livelihood, these three systems, uh, if we divide them into three, are they really three separate systems? Isn't it one elegant, beautiful system, a complete system, one system which is living, learning, livelihood? If we separate them, we'll have three broken down systems. And then not able to handle these three stray fragments of these. I grew up in Punjab. I, I was born in Punjab. Uh, grew up in Himachal and then lived in various cities across India with family, made a lot of friends. Uh, but wherever I went, somewhere I knew that I've moved away from my native land, far, far away, and then felt an outsider for most of the time. Now, living in a mud house somewhere feels like I've returned to where I belong, uh, returned to being a native of nature. Learning happened in good schools, colleges, went on to teaching uh, in alternate uh, spaces, uh, ventured into understanding, making sense of natural learning, how children learned in nature or how nature configured itself. Uh, it took me to tribal areas, to natural settings, which are uh, rural areas too. Now living in a house which is closer to and more in tune with nature, every moment is a learning moment. Every living moment is a learning moment. Explored various livelihoods and figured out actually what is more contextual and what I would like to do for myself rather than only what I had studied for. Now these tunnels and bubbles that we live in somewhere make us believe that this is the world that we have. Uh, this is the real world. Somewhere we feel this blinkered approach makes us a little distant from what is real and what is the larger whole. This kind of a blinkered approach somewhere distances us from the real social issues that, that are happening. No wonder then that you know there are the crises that we are facing of either lots of traffic, uh, crowded roads, air pollution, water scarcity, uh, depleting fossil fuels, you know, and many more of such that they remain news. Uh, do, if we feel disconnected, we won't know how to handle these, how to find solutions for these. But in the absence of instinct somewhere, uh, we, we, numb, we are numb to what is required for our well-being and what's required for our planet's well-being. The planet which is our home, you know, what is living, learning, livelihood for us uh, as a family and for me as an individual, to somewhere Livelihood, if livelihood is securing life essentials, uh, you know, then it comes in the center. And in the history of evolution of mankind, we've seen that uh, the first thing that uh, clans did was to secure life essentials. They would settle in places where there was a river, you know, close to a river, or where there was enough uh, fertile soil to grow their food, or there was fruit uh, which they fed on. So securing life essentials, some way we feel, comes in the center. Around it, around the life essentials is what we, how we organize our life, that becomes our living. And learning ap actually happens as a consequence of living. You as a person, you are going through all these things together at the same time. You are trying to secure, securing life essentials is not only, it doesn't happen only when you are grown up. Actually, a child uh, also secures the life essential by just being charming and ensuring that he or she gets the attention that she needs or gets food, water, everything, will scream and ask for it. So habits of uh, securing life essentials start very early. It's just that we have to figure out how we organize our life around it. So if this is you, let's see how the life course takes shape. You find a partner, uh, yours and your partner's livelihood, living, learning, come together. You adjust. You may welcome a new member into the family. The new member grows up. Again, a little reconfiguration and adjusting happens. The new member leaves for, for studying, for work. Then it's again you and your partner. Yet 
more reconfiguration happens. Your partner may leave, uh, you know, uh, or may die. It's just you left again. So this is what, how the life generally on an average takes course. Living, learning, livelihood is actually, it gets configured and reconfigured many times through our life stages. I got a chance uh, through all of this to be a part of uh, urban, rural, and uh, tribal settings for a considerable amount of time to be able to see some patterns. Livelihood is organized at large scale, big offices, big buildings. In a rural space, uh, livelihood is handled at intermediate scale, not too big, not too small also. It's often dependent on government support system and interdependence is there for subsistence. One is not lost. There are skills that people gather to be able to sustain oneself independently too. However, uh, everything is human scale, human pace. Uh, often the livelihood spaces are uh, the living spaces also and learnings also happening along. It's, uh, the living is insular, processes become linear. Uh, the commodities or the products that we use, uh, we buy them from uh, the shelf of a shop and often the, the packaging goes into a dustbin or the product goes down the drain. This is what I'm calling linear. So this kind of a linear living distances us from uh, what's the origin of this uh, place. We are, not, we are not completing the loop. The tribal space, however, because it's human scale, uh, is able to close the energy loops. Uh, whatever they are using is growing in their backyard or their front yard. Uh, the, the material used for construction is such that it actually will degrade and go in, become soil one day. Uh, rural, on the other hand, is able to retain the cultural rootedness, yet it aspires for the dominant uh, vibes or vibrations or benchmarks of a good life that the dominant, predominant society is throwing at them. So somewhere rural has a mix of both. Learning system, an urban learning system, uh, mo seems more induced. Learning is induced rather than imbibed. Uh, they also take charge of receiving visitors and host them. So they are supporting the families uh, in taking care of the running of the clan. Uh, so they become offerers of society by teenage. Uh, you know, they grow up just uh, quite fast and habits of securing life essential start very early in life. Uh, One example is uh, the example of Gotul where uh, you know, in certain tribal areas, there is a dormitory that is made by the teenagers of that clan, uh, which they actually make, make from scratch. They go clear out a space in the forest, they uh, source the material to make a dorm, and then uh, that's actually an exploration space for adolescents to figure out who they are, what they want from life. So we built, we, we moved into a mud house, which we call Amla. Uh, where we have tried to implement some of the things which we feel. For energy needs, we don't want to be dependent on the external systems. Use the soil to grow our food that we need uh, around our house, and also the soil itself to absorb the waste that we are generating. And we did that for the hens came into the picture because we wanted to mend a broken loop. Uh, we wanted to convert the linear to a circular. So uh, we wanted to nourish the, make the soil nutrient rich. And we were bringing cow dung and manure from outside. And we felt, no, it should happen within, you know, in the same space. We shouldn't be bringing more stuff from outside. So we thought of introducing chicken into our, uh, the open soil space outside. Uh, thinking that uh, chicken uh, poop is nitrogen rich, which enriches the soil. Uh, and it gives us eggs as bonus, which takes care of our nutrition. And the leftover food that we have left the next day is eaten by the chicken. So it became a nice way to mend the broken loops. Manual over automated became, the gui became a guiding principle for us. Uh, we are again uh, physical beings. We need a lot of physical activity and if we don't do enough, we have to then go to gyms or do other kinds of exercises to keep fit. Uh, we thought of that if our daily life processes involves a lot of physical activity, we remain. So we store, uh, store the rainwater in, uh, in a tank under the 
uh, ground and we draw it for all usages that we have in the house. We draw it using a hand pump, we do a cleaning, we work in the soil area to grow our food, uh, we wash our clothes. So we've kind of removed the conveniences of, uh, you know, uh, uh, life which distance us from the uh, natural resources and somewhere the, by being in closely connected to all these resources somewhere valuing of these resources has increased. It really pains now if the rain water that we stored and that has to last the whole year if it gets wasted it really pains. Otherwise when we had taps sometimes uh, you know uh, we won't even register how much water is going waste or we are using. Uh, we have appropriate tech it's not low tech or high tech but appropriate tech that is needed to live a wholesome life. It's a combination of modern and traditional and minimal, focus on how much uh, do we need. So we do have a solar inverter, uh, but it's just 850 VA, just enough for us to be able to charge our phones and laptops because we work from there. Uh, it's enough also sometimes to make, to run a tea kettle, you know, sometimes you want to just have tea uh, on a tea kettle. So just that much and then it goes off, then it will recharge again when sun comes out and then we are able to do more with that. So minimal became a guiding principle that, you know, actually how much do we need to sustain ourselves? Otherwise the market is throwing up so much uh, which actually clutters. Uh, when it clutters, you actually don't find space to think that how much is yours and actually what is it that you need. So we actually started from zero space, uh, slowly figuring out this is what we need and trying to really control input and output. Because at input if we control, we know what really is needed is coming in and what happens to its output. It has to come back into the uh, system that we are living. Not that we've uh, attained it full, it's still work in progress, but again it's just uh, we are moving one step closer to where we want to go. Uh, learning we felt if it's a consequence of living rather than being an intervention, so every moment spending there is kind of uh, a learning. This picture is of an old uh, solar cooker which was broken, the mirror had broken and then we repurposed it to just dry our food. If we have excess bananas, they just, uh, you know, we, we dry it and we preserve it and use it. So like that, lots of active feedback loops are at play, you know, rather than relying on uh, secondhand knowledge of uh, what this soil is about and how much will it grow, which plant grows in which season, we felt, okay, let's just live and explore. Let nature guide us into what is required here. We, we are okay to fail but let nature guide and it has been guiding us so far uh, and um, immersion, assimilation, integration into it actually helps us decide what we have to do. This is how the food is organized. Uh, we, we cook our two meals in the solar cooker in the sun. Uh, sometimes we use the firewood chula, uh, manual grinding machines, uh, lots of things that grow. Uh, we have excess which we distribute in our community and sometimes make pickles and arishtams and uh, cleaning agents with leaves around. Lots of uh, flora and fauna around in the campus which actually helps grow a lot because if we don't use any chemical pesticides, the soil doesn't degrade, the pollinators don't become extinct. When the whole ecosystem is thriving, there is so much that it has to offer you. We are enjoying uh, all of that. There are lots of processes at play of growing and, uh, you know, uh, storing water, using cleaning water, how it goes back. Uh, learning is that if it's a consequence of living rather than being an intervention. So every moment spending there is kind of uh, uh, learning. This picture is of an old uh, solar cooker which was broken, the mirror had broken and then we repurposed it to just dry our food. If we have excess bananas, they just, uh, you know, we dry it and we deserve it and use it. So like that, lots of active feedback groups are at play, you know, rather than relying on uh, second-hand knowledge of uh, what this soil is about and how much will it grow, which 
plant grows in which season we felt okay let's just live and explore let nature guide us into what is required here we, we are okay to fail but let nature guide and it has been guiding us so far uh, and the um, emotion assimilation integration into it actually helps us in self This is how the food is organized. Uh, we, we cook hot food meals in the solar cooker in the sun. Uh, sometimes we use the fire of chula. Uh, manual grinding machines. Uh, lots of things there. Uh, we have excess which we distribute in our community and sometimes make pickles and additions and uh, cleaning agents with these around. Lots of uh, flora and fauna around in the campus, which actually helps grow a lot because if we don't use any chemical pesticides, the soil doesn't degrade. The pollinators don't become extinct. When the whole ecosystem is thriving, there is so much that it has to offer. We are enjoying uh, on that. There are lots of processes at play of growing and uh, you know. Uh, Storing water, using cleaning water, how it was that. Lot of systems also, uh, technology at play with the composter, uh, you know, converting our kitchen waste into manure, which comes back right into the garden. The biodigester, which, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, treats our toilet waste and the treated water uh, comes back into the garden again. The green water system which cleans our baths and kitchen vessel waste, uh, it cleans and again it comes back into the garden. Uh, the atmospheric water generator, which is a backup if we are out of drinking water, drinking rain water, that's the best backup. We haven't used it for the last two years, but it's still there. So this technology of uh, some manual, some electric vehicle, And at night, not having electricity is actually opened up to benefits of darkness. Nature meant us to be in darkness for some time. Uh, but someday we feel like extending our days by lighting up the whole uh, area still late. And then we suffer from stress and the body being fatigued. Someday we feel that maybe this kind of uh, being in darkness, living more in tune with natural rhythms, more in tune with natural cycles is making us feel more congruent than ever before. So finding congruence is a potential basis. And looking at the uh, livelihood as one system rather than separating. Probably this separation is leading to the alienation that we are feeling as individuals and as a couple. Thank you.